Job one of Obama's presidency, the first thing he wants to push through Congress is an economic stimulus bill. To do that, President Bush has, excuse me, President Obama, who has reached out to Republicans in Congress to get their input. If you do the math, such outreach is kind of unnecessary, given the Democrats' big majorities in both houses of Congress. The new president not only enjoys ginormous approval ratings right now, his party has once-in-a-generation majorities in both houses. The Republican Party, especially in the House, has no power right now. I mean, well, they have the power to call preferences, uh, call press conferences, to, to use the cloakroom for their coats. They have the power to cash their paychecks. And that's about it. I mean, franking, right? They can frank. They have that privilege. But in terms of affecting what laws pass, in terms of actually having power in the House, they are way, way out of power. Despite that, or maybe because of that, President Obama invited congressional Republicans to the White House today to talk about the stimulus. And at that meeting, as the technically powerless Republicans complained that the stimulus plan isn't what they would have written, as they pushed for more tax cuts and less spending, President Obama reportedly turned to them at this meeting and said, and I quote exactly here, he said, quote, I won, end quote. Score one for the short, to-the-point, declarative sentence. The president clearly understands that elections have consequences. I won, he said. But if he understands that, then why is the stimulus plan that he is pushing for less an I won sort of stimulus plan than an I tied sort of plan? What we've been expecting from the stimulus, you might have heard on this show, is a big investment in infrastructure creating jobs by building and repairing things like roads and bridges and schools and public transit and the electrical grid and our water systems. It's a right away bang for your buck investment in society. It creates jobs and it has the nice little side effect of making us safer and stronger and better equipped to compete in the world. If we economically need to incur some costs, what could be better, right? Well, apparently tax cuts could be better. Tax cuts? Yeah, tax cuts make up 33% of the stimulus plan that's making its way through Congress. A third of the stimulus goes to tax cuts. Infrastructure, on the other hand, if you add up all the other projects that could possibly be portrayed as infra infrastructure, you get to about 18%, which means that less than one-fifth of the entire stimulus package is infrastructure. Democratic Congressman Jim Oberstar revealed this week that to make room for all of those tax cuts, all sorts of funding for mass transit projects was gutted. Among the items left on the cutting room floor, substantial funding for Amtrak, for aviation, for the Army Corps of Engineers, for water infrastructure programs, drinking water and water treatment facilities, and sewer lines. Funding for all of that infrastructure was slashed to make room for billions of dollars in tax cuts. Tax cuts, which most economists say will do far less to stimulate our hemorrhaging economy than, say, infrastructure spending. Here's what Nobel Prize winning economist Paul Krugman told me on this show last month. The good thing about federal spending is that it's actually spent, that it actually does boost the economy. And if it's infrastructure, it also leaves you with something of value afterwards. Whereas if you do it the way that Republicans want to do it, which is always tax breaks, first of all, it might not be spent, so it might not help the economy at all. And then you've got nothing to show for it when the thing is over. The consensus is in on this. What we need for the economy and for the country is spending on stuff like infrastructure. We need a lot of it, and we need it right away. And yet, Democrats and President Obama appear to be letting the technically powerless Republican minority dictate the terms of the stimulus bill and dictate terms that don't get us what we need, loading it up with tax cuts and slashing spending on projects that could actually create jobs and do right by the country. That's not I won. That's, listen, I have some authority, you have some authority. What would you like me to do? The president's let's all get along way of doing things has served him very well politically so far. It may in fact be the secret to his political success. But in terms of policy, what the country actually needs, can't we just say that the people with the bad ideas don't get their way anymore? Joining us now is Democratic Congressman Peter DeFazio of Oregon. Congressman DeFazio, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm very much with you on that. I mean, look at the Bush tax cuts. Borrowed $160 billion last spring. 
uh, it gave us a one quarter of one percent boost in one quarter of the economy. We borrowed that money, generations for the next 30 years are going to pay for it. How about investing in the the things that underlie the foundation of our economy. Infrastructure is one of those. Every time I hear an interview, it's about, oh, we're going to build bridges and highways and transit, and we're going to invest in the future. As you pointed out, 7% uh, of the bill is in traditional infrastructure. It's not enough, and it's a very bad trade-off for tax cuts. It's not about the House. It's all about the Senate. And, you know, I mean, if they're wrong, we don't need their votes. The best budget of the Clinton years was the first budget and didn't have a single Republican vote. Hmm. I want to be bipartisan. I want to work with the Republicans when they're right. But when they're wrong and when they want to continue the failed policies of the past, we don't need to buy them off with $300 billion of tax cuts. Well, to, to be clear, it's about 7 point something percent of the stimulus bill as proposed is for transportation infrastructure. We did some math here today and we feel like depending on what you call infrastructure, maybe you can get up to 15 or 18 percent in total. Did, did it used to be more and it got dialed back in order to make room for the tax cuts? We propose more, mm. uh, and there's, I think, a pretty good consensus among most members of the House that it should be more. But the dictate from on high and the negotiations with Obama's advisors, I don't think the president is there. I think he's ill-advised by Larry Summers. Larry Summers hates infrastructure. And some of these other economists, they were very much part of creating the problem. Now they're going to solve the problem. And they don't like infrastructure. So they want to have a consumer-driven recovery. We need an investment and productivity driven recovery for this country, a long-term recovery. When we borrow from future generations, we should invest for future generations. Infrastructure is exactly that. That's not, there's not enough there for infrastructure in this package. We're still pushing back. I hope we can do better. When you say you, you heard from on high and you don't think it's the president himself, you think it's his advisors, is it Larry Summers who's giving uh, House leadership the instructions on what to do here? It's not clear, but, you know, Larry is pretty much on record as being anti-infrastructure until very recently when he seems to have had a conversion uh, slightly, but not enough. Well, and, the, and the president speaks very highly about, uh, of infrastructure. I mean, he brings it up himself. Yeah. He's been talking about it. If, it. if there's a distance between him and his advisors and what his advisors want is what's making it into the bill, that's a problem. He needs to know it, and that's why I'm speaking out with, you know, I'm, I'm hearing a little bit of flack, but I'm speaking out because I think... The president is with us. I think he understands that we need long. Chicago. Let's look at Chicago. Chicago has a six billion dollar uh, deficit in their uh, transit infrastructure. It, this bill would give them two hundred and fifty million dollars for that deficit. Uh, a very, very articulate woman who heads up their transit authority said, "We could spend five hundred million dollars tomorrow we have back orders on buses and we have our you know we have our rail system that's propped up by two by fours in places we could spend it tomorrow this is stuff on the shelf take it off the shelf spend it we're gonna have half of what we need and we could get really close to that six billion in a very short period of time that's chicago let alone the rest of the nation that's his hometown we know we can spend this money protect them, you know, productively. The bureaucrats, Larry Summers and others, oh, they can't spend the money quickly enough, won't create the jobs. It will create the jobs. She pointed out the fact that they would buy buses. It would not only, you know, augment their system, it would produce jobs in Minnesota where they build the buses, 3,000 jobs, if we could place the order for the buses. But they're not going to get enough money in this package to do that. What, what you're saying is so important, I have to, and it underscores what I have been hearing from elected officials over the last few weeks. The common wisdom on this is wrong. What everybody's saying in the press, what all the advisors are saying is, we'd love to make it all spending. We'd love to, because that's where you get the most bang for the buck, but the projects just aren't there. They're just isn't enough stuff to spend money on but then when you actually ask the people who'd be spending the money they can yeah. show you how to quintuple what they're being offered easily it's right. um th there's there's a distance here between the reality and the rhetoric on this off the shelf yeah. the chicago transit authority has options for buses they can't afford and the money they get won't even allow them to execute all their options which provide jobs not only in chicago but in minnesota and elsewhere around the country with those suppliers this is a great investment in the future of this country and then we need to look longer term on our on our transportation infrastructure too i mean this what's in this bill 
is like one half of one year's deficit in our infrastructure spending. That's nowhere near what we need for current deficits, let alone you know a new 21st century infrastructure system. China is spending $600 billion over the next two years. We will spend one fifteenth of that in this bill. Wow. Congressman Pete DeFazio of the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, you made some news tonight, sir. Again, I'm, I'm thankful to you for choosing to do it here. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for the opportunity.